Welcome to the Ask a Scientist video series. In this episode, we'll talk about GC bias and sequencing, what it is, why it matters, and some steps you can take to reduce it. GC bias is a potential artifact of next generation sequencing that presents as uneven coverage of GC content. GC bias is more noticeable when the GC content coverage of the sample is variable. It's important to understand how to minimize GC bias to avoid the need for additional sequencing. A GC bias distribution plot provides a visual representation of sequencing coverage across regions of different GC content and shows the extent of GC bias in the sequencing data. First, let's look at the components of the GC bias distribution plot. The x-axis shows you the GC percent of 100 base windows across the sample, ranging from 0% to 100%. The bars represent varying amounts of GC content in your reference genome. Data plotted at 0% shows the number of genome regions that contain 0% GC bases, or is 100% AT. Data at 50% shows how many regions contain 50% GC bases and regions that are entirely GC bases are represented in the bar at 100. In this theoretical example, there is the same amount of GC% percent windows for the genomic reference. You can plot the size of the windows in any fashion in order to adjust for the amount of normalized coverage data points you would like to graph. Here the data is shown in smaller increments to visualize more points. Or you can create larger groupings. In the following example, the data is grouped in increments of 10, as shown here. This plot represents what an actual GC distribution for a typical reference genome might look like. The secondary y-axis on the right shows the amount of GC content in each window. In this reference genome, most of the regions contain 40 to 60 percent GC meaning that this genome has a fairly even GC distribution. The primary y-axis on the left represents the fraction of normalized coverage per window, shown by the green dots. We calculate normalized coverage by looking at a single GC% percent windows sequencing coverage and dividing by the mean coverage of all the windows. This would be an ideal distribution of coverage because all the points are 1, indicating that all regions are equally covered. This new distribution is what a typical example might look like for the normalized GC coverage of the reference genome. Let's look at 60% GC window. The greatest number of windows fall in this GC percentage for the reference. So this region is likely to achieve more sequencing coverage compared to the mean. Thus, as might be expected, the normalized coverage here is greater than 1. Where in contrast, in the 70% GC window, which contains fewer genomic regions, we achieve left coverage than the mean, resulting in a normalized coverage less than 1. So in this example, we find that the lower the number of windows in a particular GC grouping, the lower expected amount of normalized coverage. However, several aspects of NGS sample prep can impact the extent of GC bias seen in the sequencing data. For example, the choice of DNA library preparation method can impact GC bias. In addition, target enrichment of specific regions can further increase GC bias. And in some cases, probes may have higher affinity for GC rich regions, thus shifting the data towards more reads in these regions. Less frequently, you may see a bias towards lower GC regions. This is most likely to occur with AT-rich samples. It's always important to minimize coverage bias because uneven coverage can require additional sequencing to reach the desired coverage of all the regions of interest. To increase coverage uniformity and decrease bias across GC or AT-rich regions, Consider utilizing a robust library preparation workflow that provides high complexity of your sample and avoids uneven coverage. Use well-designed and high-quality probes for target enrichment. Refrain from over-amplifying sequencing libraries. And finally, ensure all of your equipment is properly calibrated. 
This can ensure accurate execution of the optimized library prep protocol, as well as prevent increased bias during target enrichment, hybridization, and washes. Thanks for watching Ask a Scientist. If you have any questions or ideas for future topics, we would love to hear from you.